everyone, my name is Leonie and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to do a master list of books that take place all around the world. So as you may know, I love fantasy books. It's basically all I read. But I do know that myself and some book lovers that I know sometimes get a little bit tired of the cliche middle age European setting. And I know that every time a new fantasy book is published that is inspired by some other kind of culture, I'm always immediately excited because I really like that. So I came up with this idea and decided to do some research and create a list of a bunch of fantasy and science fiction books that are inspired by all sorts of different cultures. So if you feel like reading a fantasy book that is inspired by some kind of culture that you really want to read about then keep watching this video because I have almost 40 books that take place all over the world. Keep in mind that I have not read all of the books on this list but if I did read the book then I will put my star rating on the screen so you can kind of see what I thought about it. All right so let's begin. Let's start in Europe. First two books that are inspired by Russian culture. First one is Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo and this is a fantasy... of course it's a fantasy story. This is a freaking list of fantasy books. In this country that is inspired by Russian culture there are people called the Grisha and they have elemental powers and we follow the story of Alina who finds out that she is a Grisha and can control light. And another book that is inspired by Russian culture is The Crown's Game by Evelyn Skye. Evelyn Skye has actually studied Russian culture so I'm guessing that she knows her shit. And this is a story about two magicians who compete in the crowns game to see which one of the two magicians will be the king's official magician. A book that is inspired by Slavic culture is Uprooted by Naoma Novik. This is a Beauty and the Beast retelling with wizards. I have to say the Slavic culture is not very prominent, but you know, it, it's there, it's there. The next book takes place in Prague and that is A Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. This book follows the story of Karu who is a girl that was raised by demons and she falls in love with an angel which is of course forbidden because demons and angels are mortal enemies. Next up are two books that are inspired by Dutch culture. First book is Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. This is a heist story that follows six people who are going to rescue someone from a prison and they're all from a city that is inspired by Amsterdam and they travel by ship to a place that is also loosely inspired by Scandinavia. And the second Dutch inspired book is Baker's Magic by Diana Zahler which is a middle grade fantasy about a girl who finds out she has magical powers that have to do with baking. And especially the landscapes and the settings are very heavily inspired by Dutch culture. A book that was inspired by French culture is Crimson Bound by Rosamund Hodge. This is a Red Riding Hood retelling about a girl who is attacked by a forest creature and she gets the choice either you will be killed or you have to kill someone else and you will live and the story follows from there. The setting of the next book was very heavily inspired by Venice in Italy and that is The Assassin's Heart by Sarah Ahears. This is the story about an assassin girl who wants revenge after a rival assassin family massacres her own assassin family. Then I have three books that are inspired by ancient Rome. First we have An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. In this book you follow the story of a slave girl and a soldier boy and about their quests against the oppressive government, you know. And the next obvious one is basically all the books from the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series and Heroes of Olympus series by Rick Riordan which are books about Greek gods. I mean, how Greek do you want to have it? And the last Roman Greek inspired book that I want to mention is technically not a fantasy book but I still want to mention it because I thought you might like it and that is the Gladiator series by Simon Scarrow which, surprise, is about gladiators. I know a friend of mine read it and she says it was very good and I trust her opinion so that's why it's on this list. And then we travel to the northwest of Europe where I have four books that are inspired by Celtic culture. First up we have the Iron Face series by Julie Kagawa which is about a girl who finds out that she is half fey and has to go on this adventure in the Feyland that is kind of inspired by A Midsummer Night's Dream. 
from Shakespeare. The next series is the Fay Fever series by Karen Marie Moaning and it takes place in Ireland and it's about a girl who also gets caught up in this whole story with Fay and stuff. Another Celtic inspired book is Tith by Holly Black which is about a girl who finds herself in a war between two rivaling Fay families. And the last European book that I have for you is the Magnus Chase and the Gods of Osgard series by Rick Riordan, which is a series that is influenced by Scandinavian culture and is all about the Scandinavian gods. Moving on to the Middle East. First, we have a very well-known one, and that is The Wrath and the Dawn by Rene Adier, which is a romantic A Thousand and One Nights retelling. Another A Thousand and One Nights retelling is A Thousand Nights by E.K. Johnston. And this is a more mature feminist retelling of A Thousand and One Nights. Then we have The Forbidden Wish by Jessica Corey, which is a Aladdin retelling where the main character is a girl and she is the genie and she falls in love with Aladdin. Another series about genies is the Ginny Wars series by Amber Lowe. And this is about a girl who is a genie and there it war. Duh. The title says it all. A book that takes place mostly in the deserts of the Middle East is Rebel of the Sands by Elwyn Hamilton and this is about a girl sharpshooter who runs away from her desert home and walks into all sorts of trouble. Another series is the Crescent Moon series by Saladin Ahmed. To me this kind of sounded like Mistborn takes place in the Middle East. I think that's all you need to know. The next book takes place in the Ottoman Empire and it is And I Darken by Kirsten White and this is a sort of reimagining of the story of Vlad the Impaler where Vlad the Impaler is a girl and she's our main character. Then I have three books that take place in Egypt. The first one is The Cain Chronicles by Rick Riordan which is about the Egyptian gods. Dreamblood series by N.K. Jemisin is a series where people harvest magic from people's dreams. And the last book is Ink and Bone by Rachel Kane, which takes place in the Great Library of Alexandria. And it's about the magic that's held in books. Moving on to Asia. For China, I have two series. First, the Iona Duology by Alison Goodman. This is a story about dragon masters, and once every few years, the new dragon master is chosen, but only boys are allowed to compete. But our main character, Iona, who's a girl, is like, I want to be a dragon master, so she dresses up as a boy and competes in the tournament. A standalone book that I found is The Ghost Bride by Yang Tse Chu and it is about a girl who marries a deceased member of a very very wealthy family and now she's the ghost bride because most of the time the titles basically say it all. Next up are books that are inspired by Japan. First we have Ink by Amanda Sun which is a paranormal book that actually takes place in Japan and it's about people who can make drawings on paper come to life. The Lotus War series by Jay Kristoff are inspired by Japanese culture and are also mixed with some steampunk and it's about a young samurai girl who befriends a beast and together they like fight things. And another book that takes place in Japan is also not really fantasy but I still wanted to put it in there because I thought you might like it and that is the Young Samurai series by Chris Bradford and it is about an American boy named Jack who is shrip, shrip, shipwrecked, shipwrecked, who is shipwrecked and ends up at the coast of Japan and he is trained to become a samurai and he gets caught up in this eternal war between the ninjas and the samurai. Another one of those books that my friend read and really likes and I trust her opinion. And then I have one book that is inspired by Indian culture and that is The Star-Touched Queen by Roshani Choksi. This is a Hades and Persephone retelling with Indian mythology mixed into it. There was one book that I found that was inspired by African culture and that is Who Fears Death by Nedi Okurafor. This takes place in a post-apocalyptic Africa and we follow the story of a woman who finds out she has supernatural abilities. Moving on to America. First I have two books that take place in the USA during the time of the westerns. The first one is Vengeance Road by Aaron Bowman. I don't know if this actually has magical elements but I know that it's a western with a very badass main character. Then a western that does have magical elements is Revenge and the Wild by Michelle Modesto. This is a western that's mixed with some steampunk elements and it's about the adopted daughter of an inventor 
who invented a machine that can create magic from gold. Then a book that takes place during the gold seer era in the USA is Walk on Earth a Stranger by Ray Carson and it's about a girl who has the ability to sense where gold is in the ground. The next book takes place in the Caribbean Sea and that is A Fierce and Subtle Poison by Samantha Mabry. And this is about a boy who finds a cursed girl on the island of Puerto Rico and they try to find out what's going on. And then last but not least a book that takes place in Hawaii is The Girl from Everywhere by Heidi Heilig. I think if you can't choose what culture you want to read about. This book would be perfect because from what I've heard this is a book about time traveling and the main character travels to all sorts of different time periods in different parts of the world. So I think it's just like the perfect book to end this video with. And those were all the fantasy science fiction books that I could find that were inspired by cultures from all over the world. Please let me know in the comments if there are any books that you know that are inspired by different cultures so that the comment section will kind of become an extension of this list. I really hope this list was helpful for you and I will see you soon with another video. Goodbye! Take me